Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 25th of July. Ramnath Kovind takes oath as 14th President of India in the Parliament. Suicide blast kills 25, mostly policemen in Pakistan's eastern Lahore city. And Nifty hits historic 10,000 mark for the first time. And now for all the details, Ramnath Kovind was sworn in as the 14th President of India in a ceremony at the Parliament House in the National Capital on Tuesday. He replaced Pranab Mukherjee by winning the presidential election held last week. Ramnath Kovind arrived in a presidential horse-driven coach at the Parliament House in a ceremonial procession on Tuesday for administering the oath of India's highest constitutional office. He was sworn in as the 14th President of India by Chief Justice J.S. Khehar a day after outgoing President Pranab Mukherjee's five-year term ended. The newly elected president delivered an address in the central hall of the Parliament in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi Vice President Hamid Ansari and other senior leaders. मैं इस महान राष्ट्र के 125 करोड़ नागरिकों को नमन करता हूं और उन्होंने मुझ पर जो विश्वास जताया है उस पर खता खरा उतरने का मैं बचन देता हूं मुझे इस बात का पूरा एहसास है कि मैं डॉक्टर राजन प्रसाद डॉक्टर सर्वपल्ली राधा कृष्णन डॉक्टर ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम और मेरे Purvarti Sri Pranam Mukherjee, Jene Hamis Nese Pranab Da Kehte Hai. The newly elected president later took the first salute at the presidential palace and accompanied former president Pranab Mukherjee to the latter's house. A qualified lawyer, 71 year old Kovind, is the country's second Dalit president after K.R. Narayanan. As the heavens open up, Meanwhile, seven Kashmiri separatists held on charges of receiving funds from Pakistan-based militant groups to wage attacks were sent through 10 days custody by a Delhi court on Tuesday. A Delhi court on Tuesday sent seven Kashmiri separatists in IA custody over charges of terror funding. India's National Investigation Agency or NIA had arrested the seven men, members of Kashmir's main separatist alliance, Huriyat, on Monday on charges of receiving funds from Pakistan-based militant groups to wage attacks. The investigative agency allegedly found cash and valuables worth millions of rupees, electronic devices and incriminating documents during raids on the seven members of all-party Huriyat conference. Separatist violence and street protests have increased in Kashmir since last year when security forces killed a popular young separatist commando. Separatists accuse Indian forces of rights abuses. Moving on to news from Pakistan, the death toll rose to 25 in a suicide bombing incident that took place in Pakistan's eastern Lahore city on Monday. Many police officials deployed in the area were also killed while many others were injured. Residents of Lahore were in a state of shock on Tuesday, a day after a suicide attack shattered a period of relative calm in Pakistan's second largest city. A suicide bomber on a motorcycle killed at least 25 people, many of them police, in the eastern Pakistani city of Lahore on Monday. At least 52 others were injured in the blast that occurred while police was carrying out an operation to clear street vendors in eastern Lahore city. The bombing was claimed by the Tehreek-e Taliban, also known as the Pakistani Taliban. The Pakistani Taliban is loosely allied with Afghanistan's Taliban insurgents, but focus their attacks on the Pakistani government. Bomb blasts by militants are common in Pakistan, especially in tribal areas bordering Afghanistan. But attacks in Lahore had become less frequent in recent years. 
In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission has called kidnapping of civilians by the Taliban a war crime. They have asked authorities to take immediate action and secure the release of hostages. Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission or AIHRC said the kidnapping of civilians last week from Kandhar province was a war crime and in violation of their human rights. The commission has called on the authorities to find a way to secure their release. Twenty hostages were released but seven of the hostages were reportedly killed by the gunmen. Those who were freed claimed they were kidnapped by Taliban and that the others are still being held by the Taliban. But in a statement, the Taliban denied they were involved in this kidnapping. On July 20, unknown armed men kidnapped 70 residents of Shah Wali Court district of Kandar province. The kidnapping occurred on Thursday, but the news only reached the media after the freed hostages managed to reach Kandar city. The Afghan Ministry of Interior said they do not have details about the incident. In other news from India, India's equity benchmark index Nifty hit the historic 10,000 mark for the first time in Tuesday's opening trade. The Nifty has gained over 22% this year, making it one of the world's top performers in 2017. However, the historic level proved to be short-lived as it closed lower by two points. Creating History India's Equity Benchmark Index, the National Stock Exchange Nifty topped 10,000 points for the first time on Tuesday. The broader Nifty rose to a record high in opening trade and closed lower by two points on Tuesday. Meanwhile, the benchmark Bombay Stock Exchange Sensex hit another record 32,000 mark in the opening trade before closing lower by 18 points. The NSE has surged 22% this year, just behind South Korea and Hong Kong markets, in a broad-based rally fueled by a surge in foreign investments and flows from retail investors buying into mutual funds for the first time. There is a reason for investors to rejoice at this historic landmark or you know cornerstone figure. Uh, 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 certainly, uh, Indian markets have uh, done very well in last three four years. And if you are, if you had asked anyone before four five years that Nifty will touch within three four years um, a mark of ten thousand, and it it looked like a pipe dream or a you know other person would be daydreaming. But now it's a reality today. Investors have bet heavily that economic growth will accelerate from 6.1% in the January-March quarter, boosting corporate earnings. Hopes are also high for economic and fiscal reforms after the government unveiled a national goods and services tax this month. The annual Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca is regarded as an affirmation of Muslim unity and solidarity. The first batch of pilgrims from Indian Kashmir on Tuesday left for the pilgrimage, which is considered among the five pillars of Islam. The first batch of Hajj pilgrims from India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province, comprising nearly 840 pilgrims, left for the annual Hajj pilgrimage in Mecca on Tuesday. Every year, Muslims from all over the world participate in the annual gathering. It is a religious obligation that must be carried out by every healthy and able-bodied Muslim who can afford to bear the travel expenses at least once in their lifetime. Provincial Chief Mehbooba Mufti flagged of the first batch of pilgrims at Srinagar International Airport. Nearly 8,100 pilgrims from Jammu and Kashmir province would perform Hajj this year. I am very happy. The 
मैं इस मुकदस फरीजी के लिए रवाना हो रहा हूँ बहुत खुश हूँ Hajj takes place nearly 70 days after the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Over 2 million pilgrims undertake Hajj each year from all over the world. The pilgrimage will culminate with Eid ul Azha in the first week of September. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Ramnath Kovind takes oath as 14th President of India in the Parliament. Suicide blast kills 25 mostly policemen in Pakistan's eastern Lahore city. And Nifty hits historic 10,000 mark for the first time. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom newsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.